What we are talking about today is going to be NASA's best chance at finding alien life inside our solar system. This is a new plan to build a permanent, floating research outpost in the skies above the planet Venus, using self-sustaining balloons that leverage proven technology from Mars exploration. Many attempts have been made to study Venus, and many have failed. But this time, we might finally have the key to unlock the mysteries of our sister planet. Venus is the closest planet to the Earth. It is the easiest for our spacecraft to reach, but it is also the hardest to explore. Of course, the universe wouldn't make this simple for us. So we have two key challenges that need to be overcome. The environment on the surface of Venus is so incredibly hot and dense that it's like standing at the bottom of the ocean and being on fire at the same time. Not fun, and not ideal working conditions even for scientific instruments and technology. Problem number two is that the ultra-dense atmosphere that's been pressure cooking our science probes also makes it impossible to clearly image the surface of the planet from orbit. We can't see through it. We can't survive underneath it. So the best solution is going to be splitting the difference and setting up camp right in the middle, floating in the sky. This has been done before. The Soviet Union flew balloons on Venus in 1985 on a mission called Vega. This came after the Soviets had already spent the better part of two decades trying to land on Venus with their Venera probes. But even the most durable spacecraft ever constructed wouldn't manage to last more than an hour on the planet's surface. All we really have to show from it are a couple of photographs that give us just the smallest taste of what Venus has to offer. When the Soviets shifted gears to balloon-based observation, they were able to extend the time their instruments could operate from minutes to days. The twin Vega probes floated under spherical balloons that were three and a half meters in diameter and filled with helium gas. A coating of Teflon material, just like a frying pan, was able to protect the balloon from sulfuric acid that permeates the Venusian atmosphere. They operated at an altitude of around 55 kilometers above the planet's surface, in an environment that is very similar to the Earth in terms of temperature and pressure. The biggest challenge that they faced was the hurricane-force winds of the mid-atmosphere that propelled the balloons around the planet. The Vega probes lasted for 60 hours in the skies above Venus before their batteries died. So we know what could be achieved with 1980s Soviet technology. Now, what would a modern-day solution look like? That brings us to exploring Venus with electrolysis, a project from the engineering department of MIT that was granted funding by NASA in January 2025. EVE would create a self-sustaining floating research platform that could operate in the skies of Venus for years, and it would accomplish this by using technology that has already been proven on the planet Mars. Dr. Michael Hecht is the team leader behind EVE, and prior to this, he was the head of a project called the Mars Oxygen ISRU Experiment, or MOXIE, which was deployed on the Red Planet as part of NASA's Perseverance rover mission in 2020. The MOXIE instrument was designed to extract CO2 from the Martian atmosphere and convert it into oxygen. That experiment was successfully tested 16 times on the Perseverance rover, and the results were far more successful than researchers had been expecting, producing up to 12 grams of oxygen per hour, or about double the original goal. So how does this apply to balloons on Venus? Similar to Mars, the atmosphere of Venus is made up mostly of carbon dioxide. There's just a lot more of it on Venus than there is on Mars, and CO2 is a relatively heavy gas. When the Soviets deployed their balloons on Venus, they pumped them full of helium, which is the safe bet for making something that will float. But anyone who's ever bought party balloons would know that helium does not like to be contained. The helium atoms are so light that they can make their way through pretty much anything. So inevitably, the balloon will sink. But we don't actually need helium to float on Venus. We only need a gas that's lighter than CO2, which is one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. The MOXIE instrument converts CO2 gas into breathable air by breaking one of the oxygen atoms free from its carbon bond. So you end up with two gases as a result. One is pure oxygen, and the other is a byproduct of the remaining carbon and oxygen atoms that form carbon monoxide. 
one of each. And that's poisonous to humans, so in a Mars colony the carbon monoxide would be considered a waste product. But on Venus, it's just as effective as the oxygen, because both of these molecules are going to be lighter than CO2, which means they will float. Using the MOXIE system will give us infinite buoyancy just by converting the existing air on Venus. But that only solves half of a problem, because we also need an infinite supply of electricity to run the system and power our scientific instruments. And that's where EVE can really distinguish itself, by solving the energy problem. In a very basic sense, MOXIE works like a fuel cell that's running in reverse. It uses electricity to break molecules apart, while a traditional fuel cell creates electricity by combining molecules together. And that means all you really need to do to turn MOXIE into a generator is to run it in reverse. By recombining some of the carbon and oxygen into CO2, the device can generate a flow of electricity. This is only going to be required at night when solar panels can't supply energy, but nighttime on Venus lasts for 60 Earth days of pure darkness, so the only way to have a viable long-term operation is to generate your own power. As a bonus, the carbon monoxide gas is highly flammable, so it can be used as a propellant to maneuver the balloon or even power separate rocket drones that might be deployed from the main platform. And this overall EVE platform is simple enough that we could easily deploy multiple balloons on a single mission. Okay, so we've got a totally self-sufficient floating research station in the sky above Venus. Cool. Now what does it do? There are two primary missions that we want to carry out on Venus. One is studying the planet's active volcanoes, and the other is searching for alien life among the clouds. Volcanic activity has been a major force in the evolution of Venus. The planet does not have tectonic plates, but it also doesn't have a surface that's been pockmarked with asteroid impacts, so we know that the Venusian landscape is being refreshed by volcanoes, but we don't know much about them. It wasn't until very recently that scientists were even able to confirm the presence of active volcanoes, and that came by analyzing data collected by the Magellan probe back in the early 90s. So we're desperately in need of some updated research on the subject. The EVE balloon might be able to hunt down active volcanic eruptions using a technology called infrasound microbarometers. Basically, these would detect pressure changes in the atmosphere caused by the blast from a volcano, and then the balloon could travel to the location and situate itself directly above the volcanic activity. From here, we can measure the strength of the volcano and the seismic activity it generates. We can study all of the gas and material that comes out of the volcano, and we can even drop a very robust probe down through the mouth of the volcano and investigate beneath the surface of an alien world. Speaking of aliens, we might find those too. Probably not in volcanoes, but in the clouds of Venus. In 2020, researchers at Cardiff University detected the presence of phosphine gas in the middle regions of the Venusian atmosphere, at an altitude between 55 and 60 kilometers above the surface, and a region where ambient pressure is more or less the same as the Earth at sea level, and the temperature ranges between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius, which is like Death Valley on the hottest day ever recorded but it's still the closest thing to an Earth-like environment we've ever found in the solar system. We have phosphine gas on Earth, and the only known source of phosphine comes from biological life. The researchers who published this paper explored every other potential chemical reaction and combination from the Venusian environment that may have resulted in the presence of phosphine gas. But their conclusion was that the most likely source of the phosphine would be aerial microbial life. Alien bacteria floating around in the clouds of Venus. And phosphines don't last very long, they break down over time. So if the gas is being detected right now, then it is a sign that life exists on Venus at this moment. It's either aliens or some unknown chemical process that we've never seen before. But there's only one way to find out, and that is to send in the balloons. What we're looking for is a microscopic needle in an atmospheric haystack of thick clouds, hurricane winds, and acid rain. 
So it could take a really long time to get the answers that we're looking for. And that's what makes Eve the best proposal yet for how we can actually pull this off. The hardware is proven. If it can work on Mars where the atmosphere is paper thin, then it can work even better in the dense CO2 environment of Venus. We have powerful rockets now that are much cheaper and more accessible than ever before. We have communication systems that can reach out and transmit vast amounts of data across the expanse of space. The truth is out there. All we need to do is go after it.